What's up, everyone? Brent Hess here with Cage Zilla Unchained, brought to you by the Wild Style Network. We're here today with Lucas Martino. Lucas, how are you doing today? I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Excited to get some talking in. <laughs> yeah, man. You're going to be on our upcoming bout, Cagezilla82, December 14th. Really excited to have you on, man. And uh, this is your it's going to be your first time uh, fighting for Cagezilla? Yep. Yeah, it'll be my first time. Wow, man. Excited. Excited to have you on. That's, that's a big, big step. Uh, now, you know, give us a little background. I think you've had a, you've had a kind of an unconventional uh, start to your, to your MMA career, in my opinion, with, with no amateur experience, you jumped right into the, the pool of sharks. Uh, tell us yeah. a little bit about your journey and, and kind of what led up to this point for you and, and, and give us a little in, in, insight on that. Yeah. Um, so at first, uh, my main focus was just doing Muay Thai. You know, uh, I had a big amateur career in Muay Thai and uh, I went pro in Muay Thai. I never really thought I was going to try MMA. So that was like kind of why I never did any amateurs. Um, but then uh, at one of my old gyms back home in California, uh, I had a teammate that was about to start his pro MMA journey. And, uh, you know, we'd have people like uh, Ryan Hall come out and was helping him with his grappling. And I would hop in there and stuff. And uh, just kind of started to realize like, man, maybe I want to try this, you know, it's kind of my interest in MMA started growing a little bit. And then at that point, since I was already pro in Muay Thai, I, I had no choice but to just do pro MMA. So, uh, mm. yeah, you know, it would have been cool to get a couple amateurs in, but at, at the end of the day, I still, still happy with how the, the journey's gone, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. And you had, uh, most of your experience in MMA, has come from out in California area or give us a little background on where you kind of started and um, kind of grew up in the sport. Yeah. So uh, all of my MMA fights, except for one have been uh, in California. Uh, I started first on uh, the Uriah Faber, uh, his a one combat, which okay. was cool, which was cool. Cause that, you know, that's kind of like Northern California uh, based. Um, I think I've had like three fights on there and then, uh, I got to do LFA's first show in Santa Cruz, which okay. was awesome to be a part of that. And then, yeah. um, I did a, a cage warriors down in, uh, San Diego also. So most of them have been all, all in California, but, uh, they, the Uriah favor show was where I, I first debuted and stuff. So. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, I've I, I seen a couple of your matches online, man, and you got some great Muay Thai, some nasty elbows and nice. knees on the inside, man. Yeah, that, that, that's really impressive. And and really, you know, Ryan Hall and the guys at 5050, Carlos Vera, I know those yeah. guys pretty well. I, I help uh, Ryan train for some of his fights uh, that he's had along the years, and we're good good martial arts friends. He's a, he's a great martial arts mind. Uh, yeah. Share with us um, kind of – how that I know you've been working obviously on your jujitsu there share with us how that's kind of helped round off your game and what you've really gained from that uh yeah I'm uh again because when I first went into MMA uh just primarily a striker right everything was about avoiding getting taken down and if it happens like do whatever I can just to get back up and right. uh, you know it, it worked it worked pretty well in the beginning and then you get a little bit farther along and, and you start getting some better grapplers that can kind of just hold you there for a little bit and just eat time off the clock and so that that's where I started taking a couple losses was just decisions where I was just getting held down you know yeah. and yeah. uh like I said I've known I've known Ryan for a few years now he he used to come out to work on his striking with us and then he he would help us with our grappling and so when uh he gave me the offer to to move out here and uh, to help coach and be a part of the team you know, uh, I figured I needed to do it. And uh, again, they've just really helped me get to a point where I can be confident in my grappling, where it's not like a, a hindrance, like, oh, I don't need to avoid it at all costs now. Like if we hit the ground, I have some some credible threats and uh, and ways to be offensive and not have to just purely try to defend and, and get back up. So that's that's been helpful. And I'm excited to to get to show that, you know. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, most of your fights have gone to decision. The ones that haven't gone your way have been very close, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm assuming they were just 
kind of like maybe situations where you were, you know, in MMA, the ground, if you're holding somebody down, that's, that's a big factor. And maybe I haven't seen all of your matches, but I'm assuming maybe some of them were just guys who just got on top and were not letting go, huh? Yeah. Or just holding me up against the cage and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like I said, no, ne I mean, you know, knock on wood, haven't gotten like submitted or, or TKO'd with ground and pound or anything. A lot of it just has felt like uh, getting stalled out, you know, I've, yeah. I've had one specific too, where it didn't even feel like I got in a fight because it just felt <laughs> like I was in like a grappling match, just getting held down. And, you know, I, I can still get up sometimes, but just, you know, it can just, they can eat up a lot of time if, when you don't have, have the, the answers for that, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure the wizard Ryan has given you some answers and yeah. uh, they, they have some superior uh, grappling over there at 50, 50. Now, uh, on your opponent, have are you a guy who kind of does a little research on your opponent? I'm sure you've seen him. Um, what, what have you have you have you done any research, or you kind of just like, hey, let's let's rock and roll. I'm I'm good to go. And, and what have you? If so, have you gained anything? What do you see uh, from him? Um, yeah, I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, I'll definitely like look up, you know, their record, see how how they've won fights, how they've lost fights. Uh, I was only able to find two videos uh, of this of my opponent's fights, so I'll, I'll definitely watch it. But once I watch it, like once or twice, and and Ryan and I talk about it and what what I want to work on, then I don't really watch it in, it too much after that, just to get an idea, you know, and then uh, just focus on myself and what I want to do after that. But uh, I mean, this guy, uh, he he looks good. He looks like he's willing to strike, which is cool. You know, I, I prefer it if he's willing to strike a little bit, but. Yeah. I know that uh, I think he just fought in October also and, and he got a or like a submission victory. So, you know, looks like he's credible in both areas. So that's that's cool because that's what I want to do, too. I don't want to just have to strike and just grapple. I, I want to have a fight where we're doing a little bit of both, you know, really mixing it up. So I think it'll be a good a good opponent for that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and, and a fun fact that uh, people should know, this is Ryan Hall's student um, versus Derek Brunson's student coming from Derek Brunson's MMA gym. Two UFC fighters putting their prospects in the cagezilla cage. I thought that was a exciting, yeah. fun fun fact. And um, yeah, man, it, what kind of energy are you bringing into uh, Cagezilla 82, December 14th? We're just about a month away. Um, what, what should people expect from you and, and expect to see there inside the cage? Um, I mean, I'm going to bring a high energy, but a lot of confidence, but I'm also going to be, you know, calm, collected. Uh, I'm not someone that's going to just like go balls to the wall. I'm going to be methodical, but I'm going to push uh, for that for that victory and, and push for the finish. And yeah, again, I'm just really confident, really excited to, to display some of the new skills. So I think it'll That's make awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see this lightweight bout, this professional lightweight bout inside the cage de la cage. Now, before we leave, man, give us a little quote, a motto, maybe something uh, something you've read, something your coaches have shared with you over the years, uh, something empowering that you can share with our audience and maybe uh, maybe help empower them. Yeah, so the, the first thing that came to my mind, uh, you know, and I don't know if you want to say it's like a quote or just an idea, but uh, basically just trying to live a life without having like a what ifs, you know, like what if I would have chased my dream? What if I would have, you know, moved to Virginia and, and trained under Ryan? So I, I don't want to get old and have a bunch of like what ifs. So uh, I'm just doing everything I can to to chase my dreams and doing a not leaving anything on the table with it, you know? So that's, that's kind of just how I try to live my life. What I think about. No, that's awesome, man. And that's, re that's respectable and not leaving anything on the table, just putting it all out there, putting all the chips in and saying, Hey, I'm going all in on this. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's something that um, you should be very proud of. Now, uh, Lucas, you. give us a way that, Give us a way that we can follow you, show you a little love online, whether that be your social medias, um, you know, your team, whoever you want to give shout outs to, uh, let them know you appreciate them right now and tell them, tell us as fans how we can show you a little love uh, and follow your journey. Uh, yeah. So first off, shout out to to Ryan and everybody at 5050 for, you know, welcoming me in and, and helping me a lot to improve. Uh, shout out all my old teammates and back home, all the people that support me back home, my, my friends and family. So 
it's been a, it's been a long journey with a lot of people supporting me. So I couldn't have done it without each one of them. Um, you can find me mainly on Instagram. Um, my username's Lucas underscore Martino 707. That's uh, that's the main main social media that I'm on. And then uh, also check out the gyms, uh, the gyms, Instagram 50 50, obviously. But yeah, that, that would be the main way to, to show me some love is just just IG, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. And of course, show up on December 14th, right? Yes, uh, yes. Make Buy sure you, tickets. That's right. Make sure you guys are coming out. Uh, we're excited to see Lucas Martino here make his CageZilla debut December 14th. You guys can pick up tickets at CageZilla.com. You can actually use code 5050 if you want a discount as a nice promo code for all oh, your fans cool. and friends. And um, Lucas, man, I'm, I'm hoping everything continues to go well for you. I'm hoping training and everything continues to r run smooth for you leading up to December 14th, man. Thank you for joining us here and take a little time out. I appreciate you joining us here, man. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, really excited to be a part of the show uh, on this one and, and going forward. So let's do a lot of good, a lot of good things yeah. together. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we're, we're going to have you back. And guys... Logging off here, Brent Hess with Cagezilla Unchained through the Wild Style Network. Until next time, we'll see you guys very, very soon. December 14th, make sure you guys are getting tickets. We'll see you soon.